Hello everybody, welcome to this lesson. In this video, we'll talk about sets. So what exactly are we going to discuss in today's lesson? In our introduction, we'll talk about what a set is. We'll also explain some key things we need to know in this topic. And then after the introduction, we'll mention some ways of describing sets. Description of sets. So let's get started. The idea of set is not new to most of us because in our day-to-day -day activities we group items. We often like to put items that are similar together. So we group our shoes, we put our keys together and we don't mix this up. We don't mix our shoes with our keys. Neither do we mix our food items with our clothes. For instance, when you go to the supermarket, you see that Similar items are put together. So you have a place where you find groceries, you have a place where you find household products, you have a place where you find electricals. And that is the same idea that we'll be discussing in this topic. A set is a collection of well-defined objects. When we say a collection of well-defined objects, what we mean is that the set should be clearly described so that we'll know if an object is part of the set, or not. For instance, if I have a box and I tell you that this box contains my shirt, then you won't expect to see my keys in that box because I have clearly described or I have clearly defined the object in that box. Also, if I say that this bag contains my shoes, then you won't expect to see some food items in that bag because it contains shoes and I've clearly described the object in them and of course food items are not shoes so you would expect to see them there. Also when we say that it's a collection of well defined objects then the object should be clearly described so that we won't have any doubt in our mind whether an object is part of the set or not. So imagine I, I say that well this is a set of, of tall people then you, you start to wonder who exactly is tall what height will, will qualify someone to become tall? Also, if I ask you to mention all those who have a lot of money in your neighborhood, can you mention them? Have you made a lot of money out of your music? Money? I mean, what is, how, much is, how much is a lot of money to you? Yeah, that's a good question. Exactly. So we can't really know how much is a lot of money. So that is exactly what, what, so that is exactly what we are talking about. Objects in the set should be well defined so that we can clearly identify which objects are part of the set and which objects are not part of the set. Let's go on. Objects in a set are called elements of the set and we write the elements of a set in curly brackets. Now let's consider a set A. Now let's imagine the elements of set A are E, F, G, and H. Of course, we said we should put the elements in the curly brackets, and that is what we've done here. We put the elements E, F, G, and H in curly brackets, and we put the commas in between them to show that each one of them is a separate element. Now, picking any element from set A, let's imagine we pick the element F, letter F. We can say that F is a member of set A, or F belongs to set A. Now, looking at set A, that's just these four elements. So any other element that is not inside set A, for instance, letter K, we can say K is not a member of set A, or K does not belong to set A. Let us now talk about two ways of describing a set. We'll talk about the roster method or the listing method. And then we'll also talk about the set builder notation. Set builder notation. So we'll talk about these two ways of describing a set. Let's go on and talk about the roster method. 
with the roster method, we list the elements in the set. Now let us consider some sets. Let's take set P. Now imagine set P is made up of natural numbers less than 6. What will the element be? Since we said that with the roster method, we list the element, of course, we're going to list everything in set P. That will be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So just looking at set P, we can see the elements in set P. And that is the roster method. We will list the elements in the set. We can pick another set. Let's call it set Q. And let's imagine set Q is all, all whole numbers. All whole numbers. Then, of course, we're going to start from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And since we can't list all whole numbers, then we'll put these three dots called the ellipses there to show that we can keep on counting and on and on and on. We cannot list all of them. We'll explain that further in our next video. Now let's pick another set and let's call it set R. And let's say set R is a set of even numbers less than 12. So if set R is a set of even numbers less than 12, then that is going to be 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. So we just list the elements in the set, and that is the roster method. We list the elements in the set. Let's move on to the set border notation. We use these same sets here to explain the set border notation. Remember we said that with the roster method, we list the elements in the set. But with the set border notation, we are not going to list the elements, but we use a property or a rule to describe the elements in the set. Let us use these sets we have here to see how we will describe a set using the set border notation. Let's use this set here, P. So starting with set P, let's find the property for describing the set using the set border notation. Since we are not going to list the elements and we are using the property, let's use an alphabet to represent the elements in the set. Let's imagine we are using the variable X, the alphabet X, to represent the elements in the set. What is the property that describes each element in the set? So if x is an element, then we'll say x is such that x is a member of the set of natural numbers. Because these numbers here are natural numbers. So we'll state that x is a set of natural numbers. But it is not a set of all natural numbers because the element in set P has a limit. It ends at the number 5. So after stating that x is such that x belongs to the set of natural numbers, we need to set the limit so that we'll see that it is not the set of all natural numbers. So what is the limit? Of course, we know that all natural numbers start from the number 1. So we are not even going to consider that part. But then we are going to state that x is less than 6. x is less than 6. Someone can also decide to say that x is less than or equal to 5 and that is also acceptable so x below x is such that x belongs to the set of natural numbers but x is less than 6 let's move on to the next set set q we are going to use an alphabet to represent the elements in the set again let's say we're using x to represent the elements in the set then x will be such that x belongs to what set of numbers is this well this is a set of whole numbers so i'm going to use w to represent a set of whole numbers but these three dots here the ellipses is telling us that we keep on counting it is an infinite set it doesn't have an end so the five we see here is not the end of the set it is not the limit it keeps on going so we don't have a limit to this set so the set Q is the set of is the set of all whole numbers. So what we've stated here is enough to describe the set Q. X is such that X belongs to the set of whole numbers. If we pick the number two, it belongs to the set of whole numbers. So it is part of this set. If we pick zero, it belongs to the set of whole numbers. If we pick five, it belongs to the set of whole numbers. If we pick the number ten which you don't see in the set, but it's part of the set. It belongs to the set of whole numbers. So this property describes every single element in the set Q.
that's fine let's move on uh, next set we're going to talk about is set R what property are we going to use to describe the set R with the set R imagine we mentioned that set R is a set of natural numbers and then the, the limit is from the number 2 to 10 then that will mean that 3 is part of set R 5 is part of set R but these numbers are not really part of the set they are not part of the set so how are we going to describe them we see that these numbers differ by 2 or they are multiples of 2 so then we'll say that 2x is such that x belongs to the set of natural numbers and now we set the limit we set the limit what will the limit be then x will be less than 6 now what are the natural numbers that are less than 6 that would be 1 2 3 4 and 5 so let's imagine we put 1 in this statement if x is 1 2x is 2 and that satisfies us right if x is 2 then 2x will be 4 if x is 3 then 2x will be 6 if x is 4 2x will be 8 if x is 5 2x will be 10 and that is true for this limit that we gave so if x belongs to the set of natural numbers less than 6 then 2x is what describes the set r 2x is such that x belongs to the set of natural numbers x is less than 6 if x is the set of natural numbers less than 6 then 2x describes the set r I am leaving you these questions to try on your own. The first two sets have been listed using the roster method, and I want you to try to describe them using the set builder notation. And then the next two sets, they've been described for you using words, and I want you to list them using the roster method. Please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to be notified when we post our new videos. In our next video, we'll discuss types of sets. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed this video. And please, do not forget to subscribe.